far, and that's going to continue to be the way I look at it. And correct me if I'm wrong, but Arizona State is in the Big Ten this, this year, correct? Well, they're, they're not necessarily in the Big Ten. Um, they are an affiliate as far as non-conference games. So we have our seven Big Ten teams, and we'll play our regular 24-game schedule as of now. And we added uh, Arizona to give us four extra games. Arizona agreed to all our protocol, all the medical protocol, and they are going to travel all 28, 28 games, so four to each building. Uh, so they've taken a big leap, um, you know, so they could play games and have a season. And uh, we felt it would work out well with, uh, with our scheduling. And preparing for a team that I assume you don't see very often like that, how does that change heading into the season for you guys, knowing you'll see them multiple times? Arizona, you know, the, the fortunate thing for us is we have played them and we have seen them and, and they've been as good as any team in the country. They've, they've been in a national tournament. They've been close to a national tournament. Uh, got a lot of respect for their program. And, um, you know, it's just like anything. It's if you take a night off at our level, you're going to get beat no matter who you play. That's the parody of college hockey. And, and Arizona is going to be as good as anybody in our league. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, next up, Colin Ginnon from the Lantern. Colin? Coach, Jaden seemed to really come on about halfway through the year last year. And then, of course, uh, Tate was team rookie of the year. So uh, what kind of role do you see for them this year? Well, we, we need everybody to step up. And certainly they did at the end. And as freshmen, when you step into this level, most times it's a learning curve. And, and that was true with those two players. Um, but you saw the contributions, uh, you know, that they brought to us as the season went on. Um, you know, Tate is such an energy player. And, uh, you know, you need that. He can be anywhere in your lineup. And I think Jaden, um, you know, with an injury early last year, set him back a little bit. But um, as the year continued to progress, his game progressed. And I'm looking to him to, to play up the middle where we need some centers and uh, to lean on him a little bit more in both those players. So, um, again, I would, I would suspect that they, they both will take a leap this year. How's the last month of team activity compared to a preseason where you had a set schedule to look at and then did anything change uh, once you guys figured out the exact schedule? Yeah, everything's changed. Um, you know, and certainly I think that's, uh, for me, it's to have great people around you, um, my staff and everybody to adjust. I think flexibility has been the big word around here. Um, you have to be flexible because of this fluid situation. And um, so, it has been a lot different, but in the same sense, our mentality has been the same. Um, we've just adjusted with our schedule on ice, off ice, and doing what we can uh, do with our guys to continue to try to keep everybody safe while we're doing this. So um, it's been a learning process. Um, as soon as you think you know everything, you get knocked back down. And um, this, is, this has been a learning process for everybody. And uh, we're just going to continue to roll with it. We're going to continue to be flexible. And I think we've done a pretty good job over the last few weeks of implementing what we need to, but uh, it's certainly been a different year. Thanks. Next up, Tony Girdwin from Buckeye School. Tony? Hey, Steve, I apologize. I was a minute late jumping on. So I apologize if you've uh, already addressed this, but this is given the, uh, the nature of this season, the last six, eight, 10 months, how much have you reached out to other head coaches around the nation or other head coaches on campus here about what works, what doesn't, and how much are you just leaning on other people in your position? That's a great point because uh, that's certainly what we've continued to try to do. I mean, you know, with uh, Gene Smith's leadership here, I mean, we have weekly meetings. Um, you know, I talked to a lot of head coaches here at Zoom calls, um, bouncing things back and forth. Uh, we went into our protocol later than some other teams. So we learned what was working, how the process worked. So we, we did that here on campus. Um, we did Zoom calls with other programs as far as different system stuff with different teams uh, across the country a few times. Um, I've been on a weekly call with the coaches in our league. Uh, so Zoom and I are pretty good friends right now. And, and uh, I can't wait to leave Zoom behind here pretty soon and get back to some normality. But... We definitely, it's uh, certainly been the opportunity to reach out to a lot of people to try to get through this situation. You, you talk about the normality. Are there things that you found that you might keep around when things do get back to normal? Are there things that, new things that you found that kind of work for you? 
Well, just it, to me, it's all the different kinds of the commu- ways to communicate. Communication is a key with everything. Um, sometimes you take for granted uh, the communication you have with these guys every day. And all of a sudden that face-to-face or in-person, I should say, contact's not there, but there's certainly other ways. And it forces you to communicate in a better way. And again, no matter what I'm doing or you're doing in, in all of our jobs, the communication's number one. And I think that's really uh, been an important piece for me to continue to learn how to do that. Thank you. Next up with 24 seven sports, Steve Hellwagen, Steve. Hey coach. Uh, I, I hope you can hear me. Um, I know you're uh, well acquainted with my brother-in-law, Brad Hoovler. So I, I don't want to, uh, I apologize for uh, any association with him, but uh, question I've got for you is uh, being in an NHL city. What does that mean for you as a college hockey program? I assume that that's another selling point that, that you can, uh, say to kids that uh, you'll be seen directly by pro scouts that come through uh, the town and, and just uh, just the synergy, I guess, uh, that's built between Ohio State hockey and the NHL and the Blue Jackets. Just what what's that relationship like? It's been fantastic. Uh, you know, I've got a great relationship. I was close friends with Billy Zito, who just moved on down to Florida. And so I got to know Yarmo and uh, the communication between us has been fantastic. They've been at a lot of our games. Um, again, with what the Blue Jackets have done and enthusiasm and just all of hockey here in Columbus. I mean, you look what our women's program has done. You look at what youth sports are growing, the AAA Blue Jacket program. I mean, for me, that's really exciting. And to see everything continue to grow and to see the fans and you saw the atmosphere, what was it, two years ago with the Tampa Bay series in town. Uh, I can tell you there's hockey fans here and we just want to continue to grow the sports. So I think the NHL connection has just been fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I know right now Big Ten's going without fans uh, for football. And I don't know if this was already asked either, but is there a hope or even a discussion that maybe by the end of the season, you'll have some limited uh, fan participation and ability for people to attend games perhaps by the end of the year? Well, I think we all hold out hope. Um, you know, as we all learn every day, I mean, maybe there's a vaccine that comes out, maybe some things change. You know, we just got to, again, stay fluid with this. And uh, we're just going to continue to follow the Big Ten protocol with that until there's an opportunity. And, Right now, number one's health and safety of our players and staff. And I think that's the most important thing. And if we can get to a point where, where there's, you know, fans that are loud in our games, so be it. Uh, we'll welcome that, but, but only when the, the, the time is right. Thank you. Next up, we have questions coming from David Eckert. David? Hi, Steve. Uh, thanks for your time. Um, you. you know, you, you had touched on having conversations, you know, about what works with with people who have been through this before. Um, I'm wondering if you've learned anything from those conversations about maybe how to coach through this, you know, outside of the the COVID protocols and all of that, um, some some coaching lessons you might have picked up. I think the biggest word I can say what a lot of the coaches is just, you have to be patient. Um, Just because as soon as you think you have everything under control, the next day things change. and again, I think that just, you know, patience might not be uh, my middle name, but you learn uh, to become more patient with things and understanding with things. And you have to roll with things. You have to use everybody around you to communicate and, and continue to adjust. That's the one thing that I've, I've learned through this process um, that you, the next day you might have something else thrown at you. You just have to sit back. You have to understand it take a deep breath and then adjust. And patience has been a key word in that. Next up from the Big Ten Network, Dan Kelly. Dan? Steve, it's good to see you and, and hear your voice again. I was just wondering, since the, the, you know, the NHL played their season during the summer and when you guys weren't playing, I'm sure you had a chance to watch more hockey than usual. Um, did, did you take any, anything away from watching the NHL playoffs that you can teach your players? First, I, I thought it was an inc- incredible energy. I think everybody was wondering what was going to happen. There's no fans. Uh, they're in this bubble. Um, but as you saw right off the hop, I mean, there was fights right when it started. Not that I uh, like fighting, 
but you saw the energy and the passion and what it meant and what it meant to Tampa at the end of the day to, to, to win a cup like that. So, um, you know, to me, as a coach and coaching a team, um, you're fortunate every day to put the skates on, to go out there and participate and to see what the NHL did and how they were able to pull this thing off. You know what? I mean, you got to appreciate that and, and not necessarily X's and O's, but I thought the energy, the passion from the players, the, the coaches, I thought that really gave everybody a real true meaning of, you know, what we can do every day and, and what we have in front of us here, um, you know, start next week in the Big Ten. All righty. Next up, uh, Fred. Fred, you're up for questions. And you're on mute, Fred. Good. Now you can, yep. Okay. So, um, Steve, I'm just wondering, with, with Red Berenson's uh, new role with the Big Ten, I'm sure he has an opportunity to be an advocate uh, for you as coaches. So uh, this is a guy with, what, 50 years experience or something in college hockey. What, what kind of, did he offer any guidance and counsel uh, to the group, uh, offer his thoughts? I think Red's been incredible. Um, I don't know if Red knew what he was getting into uh, when he agreed to this um, to start, but I'll tell you what, he's been all in. And um, as a former coach, as long as he was a, a coaching, I think we all have looked up to what he's gone through and now we're going through this together. So he's been a, uh, you know, a backboard to bounce things off of. And, and he's been kind of that go between, uh, between the big 10 and other leagues. And boy, I'll tell you what, uh, he's been fantastic. He's been on every meeting with us as coaches. Um, he listens, uh, he brings great things to the table and, you know, he brings our concerns um, forward. So uh, we've been very, very lucky to, to have red be a part of this thing this year. All right, we're going to go on the power play right now and just open up the floor for anyone else out there who'd like to uh, ask a question. Uh, if, uh, if I didn't get to them, uh, anyone else have any, any additional questions, uh, even including the guys that asked earlier? Uh, go ahead and, and fire away. Hey, Steve, this is Craig Murph. How are you doing? Good, Craig. Uh, you always talk about uh, games are won Monday through Thursday at practice. I look at the schedule first 10. You've got two Thursdays, a, two Sundays, a Monday and a Tuesday. How's that going to change your routine of practice for, for the coaches? That's something we've talked about a lot since the schedules come out, to be honest with you. Um, again, another uh, way of adjusting. Uh, we don't know if we'll be able to get in the weight room. Uh, if we only have two days in between, um, that's going to have to be something we learn on the fly. Uh, I still firmly believe it's our preparation and what we do between games, what we do these two weeks in between series you know, that's where you do win the, win the games. And we're going to continue to have that philosophy, but you're right. Um, some things we do might change and the amount of time we might have between games change. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to have to really be prepared as coaches. Um, and we've been talking about that a lot. So um, it's certainly going to be a challenge, uh, but something I'm looking forward to. Steve, Frank Mazzacco in um, Minnesota. Uh, we hey, got Frank. held up here a little bit. Uh, Bobby got just a little bit long-winded, but you can blame him, and I'll be the one to throw him under the bus. Uh, so uh, you've had a – you lost a very significant senior class. Um, I'm sure you have already. Could you recap what your team looks like or, or, or you hope will look like uh, going forward this season? Yeah, good to see you, Frank. I, I You know, like I said earlier, I mean, we, we certainly lost a, a big class and what their accomplishments were um, over the last four years. But you know what? It's always somebody else's time. And I'm excited about the group we got back. I'm excited about our returning guys. I'm excited about the snapshot of what I had with our new guys. You know, we have some older uh, new guys coming in, uh, basically some kids coming in as sophomores, also some freshmen. So I, I've just had a small snapshot of our team, but I can tell you what, I love our energy. Uh, you know, I love the passion we're bringing right now, what we truly have. I'm not sure if we'll see that for a while, um, but uh, I, I can tell you one thing. Our, our guys are going to be excited to show up to the rink. And, and again, Tommy Napier is in the nets, and that's what I got to count on right now is, is building from the net out. Thank you. 
We're going to turn to uh, from the rink live in Minnesota. Questions from Jess Myers. Jess. Hey, Steve. Thanks for doing this. Um, I wanted to ask you about the Big Ten. If you look at the two preseason coach, uh, excuse me, the two preseason polls, uh, both of them have Penn State number one in the Big Ten. The coaches poll has Big Ten, uh, Penn State number seven in the Big Ten. So obviously a pretty wide discrepancy there. Just kind of how do you see the league and what do you think of Minnesota being picked uh, to finish first? Well, I mean, like I say every year, I, I can go into this season and know that uh, if we're not prepared each weekend, we're going to get beat by no matter who we play. Uh, you know, I know Minnesota, I mean, I think everybody agrees uh, in our league that they're probably the preseason favorite. They got everybody coming back. They're very, they're very talented. They're fast, um, you know, so they got some older kids and I think that's really important in today's uh, game. So, but again, at the end of the day, I could see any of the seven schools winning on any night. And I think that's what you want. I mean, that's what you want as a coach. It forces me to be better and my staff and it forces our players to be better every weekend. So it's going to be another exciting year. Thank you. All right, folks, looks like we've gotten anyone, ever, everyone. If anybody else has any questions, uh, jump in right now. We do have still a couple of minutes. Can I yes. jump in? Go ahead. Steve, can you give us some thoughts, um, uh, maybe a little behind the scenes on the conversation in bringing um, Arizona State in and uh, whether their games would count in the Big Ten standings and, and how you feel about uh, those four games that you'll play against them? Well, like I said, I mean, earlier, I, I think Arizona is going to be as good as any team in our league. I mean, that's the respect uh, that we have for their program. And I think they've proved that over the last few years, being in a national tournament, being close to a national tournament. Um, we know those games are going to be just as important. I mean, it's truly going to be a different year. Uh, we felt uh, with getting our 24 league games with our league members was first and foremost, and then trying to play as many games as possible. And, you know, with Arizona Green, like I said earlier, to all our medical protocols, everything that we have, and they're traveling for all 28 games, um, they stepped up to the plate. Um, and certainly, I think uh, the Big Ten welcomed that as far as uh, considering playing four more non-conference games to give our players a total of 28. Uh, we thought that was really important. So um, it's going to be exciting. And, and again, I mean, we'll see this weekend. I think Arizona plays at Michigan. And um, I think Bobby uh, Moscow talked about on our coaches call and, and, you know, how many points and goals they have coming back. They have an older team, veteran team, and, and they have a team that we all respect. Craig, did you want to get one more question in there, Craig Mers? Yeah, I was just, uh, Steve, you mentioned about the non-conference games and not having them at the beginning of the season. How does that affect development of players? A lot of time you use those games to get the freshman feet wet and all that. Um, how's that going to change for you going straight into the Big Ten? Uh, I'm getting the freshman feet wet right now every day in practice. That's what I got to look at. But uh, you know what? Everybody's in the same boat. Uh, I mean, we're all in the same boat together. I mean, it's just maybe one of those years where you wish you had that older veteran team um, that could just step in and go. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, two weeks, all of a sudden, usually you have that exhibition game to work out some of those kinks and go through video. And unfortunately, we got to go up to Minnesota and, and play them in our first two games up there on a big sheet. So, um, we'll learn on the way and ever, like I said, everybody's in, everybody's in the same boat and, uh, we just got to use practice as our games right now. And that's just the way we got to look at it. 